Hello, boys and girls, and welcome to GSBC Storytime. Let's start with our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love. We ask that you will help the children to show love. In Jesus' name, amen. In My Mama's Kitchen by Geraldine Nolan. Illustrated by Colin Bootman. First in line. Seems like everything good that happens in my house happens in my mama's kitchen. Like the day Nadine burst in waving a letter over her head. I got it, she yelled. I got it. What? I shouted back. What did you get? Nadine held the letter over her heart and closed her eyes. She read the whole thing without even looking at it. Dear Miss Jeffries, I am pleased to inform you that you have been accepted into our university on a four-year music scholarship. We did a dance around Nadine. Mama and Daddy hugged each other real tight. Then Nadine got out her clarinet and played Daddy's favorite song, This Little Light of Mine. Daddy sang a made up song about Nadine being the first person in our family to go to college. This little daughter of mine, first in the family line. This little daughter of mine, she made it college time. This little daughter of mine, first to be in line. Going to college, going to college, see her shine. I felt so proud. I stood on a chair and saluted her. The wedding. My friend Naomi made all the plans. We held Emma's wedding in the sunniest part of Mama's kitchen, right under the window. We marched her down the aisle between Mama's African violets. Janie was supposed to be the groom, but she squirmed and meowed and wiggled out of her clothing. Then, she hid behind the stove. We had the reception anyway. Tea cakes and ice cold buttermilk. The groom came back when she saw the buttermilk. Talking pots. On the Saturday, Mama and her sisters do talking pots day. I stay close by. Aunt Katie, Aunt Gloria, and Aunt Ludie always arrive together. Each one is carrying her biggest stewing pot in one arm and shopping bags in the other. The bags Aunt Ludi carries are full of vegetables. Aunt Gloria bags are filled with meats and sausages and always one odd shaped package on the top. We all know what's inside of it. The biggest soup bone in town. Aunt Katie's bags hold extra cutting boards knives, vegetable peelers, bowls, and spoons. She pulls them out. Then she holds up Grand Lee's metal coffee pot. I'll make the coffee. In moments, every hand is busy. Nadine and Mama are washing vegetables when Mama begins to hum a melody that has no words. Then Aunt Ludie joins her in a deep, low tones. Aunt Katie and Aunt Gloria chime in with high-pitched harmony. The air is full of humming. Their hands are flying. I think they cook like hummingbirds. Just as easy the music started, it turns to talk. Remember the time you told me the insides of the human body smelled like fresh pineapple? Aunt Ludie asked as carrot peelings fly into her bag. I got laughed right out of seventh grade science class that day. Remember how mama always bragged about the way I chop onions? Says Aunt Gloria as her knife cut chunks on the cutting board. Always minced so nice and fine and never a tear. She sighs, shaking her head. How about the time 
You made my Easter dress on the sewing machine, Nell. Aunt Katie, seeding tomatoes, says to Mama. Not one of you had the heart to tell me that the hem was four inches longer in the back than it was in the front. I couldn't figure out why Reverend Taylor looked at me so funny when he shook my head. All day, the kitchen is busy and full and cozy. Even the Af African violets are blooming, just like my aunts. Great Aunt Caroline. When Great Aunt Caroline came to spend her 95th birthday with us, Daddy was glad. I wasn't. Why do we always have to be so quiet around Great Aunt Caroline? I asked Mama. She's very old, Mama said. That didn't seem like a very good reason to me. Aunt Caroline wasn't used to cats, so Janie had to sleep in the basement. Great Aunt Caroline wasn't used to children being underfoot, so Naomi couldn't come over. And Great Aunt Caroline always sat in my chair and called it her chair. She was still sitting there while I cleared the table one morning. Henry, her walking stick, rested on her lap. I figured she was watching to make sure I did a good job. But by the time I had finished, her eyes were closed. She sat completely still. It didn't look like she was even breathing. Had she died? I held my own breath as I leaned over to look her in her face. Suddenly, she opened one eye, just like Janie. Boo, she shouted. Gotcha, I made you look. Later, when we went for a walk, she called me her walking out to the backyard friend. Janie's Apples. Every October, Mama makes crab apple jelly. I wash the apples, Nadine peels them, Mama cooks them, and we fill all the jars. It get pretty busy so usually Janie hides behind the stove. Usually, but not this time. This time, she marched into the middle of the kitchen and jumped on top of a basket of apples. Mama shooed her, but she wouldn't get down. I put her on the floor, but she jumped right back up and rolled over. Shoo, Janie! I scolded. She batted an apple, then another, and another. I think she thought that apples were mice. Just as I reached down to pick her up again, she batted one mouse too many. The basket fell over, and the apples came crashing down around her. Apples rolled all over the floor. I tripped and fell right on top of Janie. Janie howled. Mama dropped a pot of water. Nadine screamed and grabbed for the mop. By then, Janie was frantic. She ran around the kitchen, but she kept running into the apple baskets. She knocked every single one over. Then she slid through the puddle of water and crashed into the wall. Just then, we heard Daddy out at the door. Janie scrambled to her feet, let out loud a wild meow, and flew outside right between his legs. He stared right after her. Then he stared at the mess in the kitchen. Finally, he looked at the three of us. Cat got everyone's tongue he asked, and we all burst out laughing. Quack.
Corn pudding time. Most of the time, we say that the kitchen is mama's. But when daddy makes corn pudding, it belongs just to him. At the first crackle of the falling leaves, he announces it's getting to be corn pudding time. As soon as the first frost covers the ground, he rubs his hands together and sniffs the air. Mmm, he says. I can almost smell that corn pudding cooking right up now. By the time the pumpkins have all become sagging jack-o'-lanterns and pumpkin pies, Daddy has taken over the kitchen. Watching Daddy make the corn pudding is a lot better than actually eating it. While he turns the handle of Mama's old-fashioned egg beater, he sings La Cucoracha and dances the cha-cha. While he sifts and stirs, measures and mixes, pours and pinches, he sings and dances the tango right across the kitchen floor. Mmm, he says, as he slides the corn pudding into the oven. This is going to be the best one yet. Then he picks me up and we twirl and swirl around the kitchen. Corn pudding has never been a favorite dessert of mine, but when daddy presents it at the dinner table, wearing that smile of his and humming, glory hallelujah, having to eat it is worth it. Winter and the Grandly. In winter, I come home from school. The warm kitchen fogs the windows. I hug mama from behind and she says, hello, sweet potato pie. How was school today? Then she drops a taste of peach cobbler into my mouth and peach juice dribbles down from my chin. Stand close to Grand Lee and warm the shivers off, she tells me. Then we talk about my day while she stirs a pot of greens, turns the frying chicken, and mixes a bowl of cornbread batter. Chum, 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 chum. Mama's wooden spoon scrapes against the bowl. But before she can put the cornbread into the oven, she jiggles and shakes the doors. I don't think I'll remind daddy that the handle is still broken, she says to me. I smile. Grandla, Grandly was mama's mama stove. And she doesn't want a new one. Neither do I. Nighttime serenade. Sometimes, in the middle of the night, I wake up. When the house is dark and quiet, I can count the ticks on the clock. 493, 494. I go into the kitchen for something to eat. Sometimes, Daddy and Janie are already there. We sit and snack together on whatever you like. Sometimes we make sandwiches out of leftovers and have ice cream and cookies. We giggle and munch and try not to wake the others. We talk in whispers and make big gestures. But daddy isn't all that good at being quiet. Clang, bang, a lid falls on the floor. Soon Mama and Nadine are in the kitchen too, and Daddy doesn't have to whisper anymore. Now that we're all here, how about a story? Daddy asks. Then he starts the way he always starts. When I was a little boy down on the farm, after the story comes, songs began. Daddy calls them serenades for sleepless nights. 
We sit around the table, talking and singing and laughing, just like that's what everybody does in the middle of the night. And when I finally start to yawn, I know for sure that everything good that happens in my house happens in my mama's kitchen. The end. Laura, we come back again thanking you for this amazing evening. Thank you for this powerful lesson in this story. Thank you for everything that you're teaching us. And thank you for all the opportunities that you are giving us through literacy. We ask that you continue to bless our family, our friends, bless the children who are listening tonight. Bless those who will continue to listen to our read-alongs as we go through this journey. In Jesus' name, we pray and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.